Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. I have a 2022 Nissan Pathfinder today, but I'm going to do a different kind of review that you will not see anywhere else, and that's because I really want to focus on the driving impression and driving experience of the Pathfinder, as opposed to spending all my time in the review talking about things like standard equipment and features and options, that kind of stuff. You can get it from almost anywhere else and any other YouTube channel. So instead, I'm going to really share with you things that most people do not share. And that is, how does this Pathfinder actually feel on the road? And how does it compare to its closest competitors, which include the Hyundai Palisade, the Kia Telluride, the Toyota Highlander, Mazda CX-9, and maybe even the Toyota 4Runner. If I were to compare this to all of those competitors, how does it actually feel on the road? And the main reason why I really want to talk about the way this Pathfinder drives as opposed to features and options and equipment is because those are things that really matter the most when you own this vehicle. When you drive it day in, day out, and when you use it as a daily driver, what really matters is how does it feel in my hand, how does it feel to step on the gas, and how does it feel for the passengers. So let me focus on three critical, most important things that determine whether you'll be happy owning and driving this 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. The three critical things include, one, the steering feel and handling, which is really important to me because the way that steering responds to your hand and the way it feels on the road determines whether it's fun to drive. Number two, ride and suspension, which is really important for your passenger and also for you, especially when you're driving on the highway, because you want to make sure that this is comfortable and smooth and refined over a long period of driving. Number three is the powertrain or engine, and that is critical in terms of figuring out whether or not this has sufficient power and torque, and whether or not it feels good on the road, because if it's underpowered or it doesn't have enough torque, it's not gonna feel right. So those are the three critical things I want to talk about, especially when it's compared to its closest competitors. So let's take this thing on the road and let me tell you all about the driving feel of the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the steering feel and the handling of the Nissan Pathfinder compared to its competitors. So once again, I'm going to compare to Hyundai Palisade, Kia Telluride, a Toyota Highlander, and I'm going to throw in Toyota 4Runner in there too, just as a comparison, even though that one is body on the frame and therefore different from others and then the Mazda CX-9. Of course, there are other um, competitors as well, but I'm going to pick the closest one. Those are the ones that people will cross shop with each other and then talk about what the difference might be in terms of the steering feel and the handling uh, against those ones. So if I were to look at the spectrum of all the different uh, SUV I just mentioned, clearly the Mazda CX-9 is the sportiest and the most fun to drive, and it has the best steering feel. It has a really good, a road feel and he has just the right amount of a steering weight uh, so I, clearly on one spectrum the CX-9 is the best one uh, followed closely by uh, surprisingly the Toyota Highlander Toyota Highlander which I also own has a really good precise steering and he has fair amount of weight from the steering in a way that's unexpected because the previous version was really numb and not very good at all uh, so Highlander actually is better than uh, the other competition uh, in terms of the steering feel and the general handling. Uh, now, then I will put down the Nissan Pathfinder, Kia Telluride, and Hyundai Palisade all about the same level. They're all a little bit loose and somewhat abstract and a bit numb, uh, although I would say the Pathfinder has the lightest steering. And that isn't a necessarily a good thing. I know that Nissan engineers probably did that intentionally to give it sort of a luxury and upscale feel, but the steering is too light. Even if I put in a sport mode, it doesn't make much of a difference. And so you don't really feel much of a road coming from the road through the steering to your hand. And it's just way too light for my taste. Now, I will say that uh, Forerunner, unfortunately though, ranks the last in terms of the overall steering feel 
and the handling, despite the fact that the 4Runner is the only one that still has hydraulic steering. So typically hydraulic steering has a good steering feel and a good response because it's still using the old traditional system and not uh, electric power assisted. Um, but it is just too light also and very numb and also really slow to respond, uh, mainly because it's a very soft sprung body on the frame design. So the 4Runner is the least fun to drive and it doesn't do very well around corners and twisty road. So that's a quick overview of the steering and the handling. What I can say about the Pathfinder is that it does have a very accurate steering, very precise and a very quick steering. So wherever you point, the car goes there directly and it tracks well. So no problem with the precision of the steering. It's just overly power assisted and just too numb. Even for those people who might not care about the handling or steering feel, I think Nissan could have dialed up the steering feel a little bit better. It's very strange because Nissan, when it comes to trucks like the Frontier and the Titan, has a exceptionally heavy steering. They, I don't know, for whatever reason, make the steering really heavy, which I do like a lot. But for some reason, on this Pathfinder, is super light. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out about the Pathfinder in terms of the handling and the steering feel. Point number two is also very important, and that's the overall ride and suspension feel, which includes noise, vibration, and harshness. So basically the refinement of the ride, the suspension control, the overall comfort and smoothness uh, of, again, of the suspension combined with, uh, with the tires. How does it feel both at low speed and also over bumpy road? and at highway speed as well. Well, what I can say is that, uh, first of all, the Pathfinder has exceptionally smooth ride, especially at highway. And here, you can truly tell that there is a European influence because Nissan is partly owned by Renault. At highway speed, this thing feels like a luxury vehicle that costs six figures. Smooth, super, super quiet, very, very refined ride. Suspension soaks up the highway with absolute ease. But it does get a little bit bumpy at the lower speed. Not so bad, but it does lose a little bit of control. So once again, if I were to compare the ride and the suspension of the Pathfinder against its competitors, where does it stand? So I would say in the spectrum of all the different cars uh, that I mentioned earlier, I would say the Kia Telluride and Honda Palisade, which are basically similar to each other, have the best balance of the ride and the suspension control. So I would rank them as the best one because they are very comfortable, really quiet and smooth. But even over bumpy road, it stays controlled and very, very refined. So I would say they're the best one. Very closely behind that is the Mazda CX-9. Again, the sportiest of the bunch. Uh, it has firm suspension, so really, really good handling and corner swell. But it can get a little bit bumpy uh, on the city road. But on the highway, it's also very, very smooth. Very close to the Mazda CX-9 and not too far away is the Nissan Pathfinder and uh, Toyota Highlander as well. Uh, they are all about the same level. Uh, you know, I would give it kind of a B plus ride. Very smooth, very comfortable, especially on the highway. But as slower city roads, the Pathfinder does get a little bit bumpy and so does the Highlander. Uh, so what about the 4Runner? Well, the 4Runner is very comfortable because it's body on frame, it can soak up anything especially bumpy road, especially off-road type road because it's designed for that kind of a uh, driving condition. But the 4Runner is the least stable on the highway because it's basically a truck, so it loses composure very easily. And so you don't want to take the 4Runner on a highway speed and make a really quick turn. It actually feels pretty dangerous. So the 4Runner has the least controlled suspension uh, in that case. And so that's my spectrum of the description. Uh, the Pathfinder is mid-pack. Uh, very smooth on the highway, a little bit bumpy on the lower speed, uh, but again, it's, uh, it's a very good suspension control, uh, one of the more comfortable SUV in the market. And the third important point I'm going to talk about is the engine performance, which includes noise vibrations and harshness, includes the acceleration, the overall feel, uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about transmission and braking in there as well. The 2022 Pathfinder in this case does a really good job. The engine is a proven engine, it's basically the same engine from before. Uh, and in this particular class of competitors, they are all using somewhat similar V6 engines. Uh, but the Pathfinder is really smooth uh, and quiet. Noise vibrations and harshness is especially impressive. 
because it really feels like a luxury SUV. It doesn't feel like a average mid-size SUV. It feels like an upscale Lexus or Infiniti, and that's probably the number one strength of the Pathfinder. So where does the Pathfinder stand when it comes to the engine feel compared to other competitors? Well, let me start with the worst one first. And unfortunately, once again, it's the 4Runner 4 liter engine. Uh, that engine is really outdated. It's you know good for towing and pulling and also for off-roading, but on the city driving and highway driving, and when you're trying to go up the hill, that engine is clearly outdated. Now, I've owned six 4Runners over a course of the last five years, so I know that truck really well, and it's uh, really beginning to show its age. So I would say the 4Runner has the worst engine. In terms of the refinement, in terms of the feel and acceleration, just the overall sense of driving. Now, once you eliminate the 4Runner, the rest of the lineup are actually very, very similar. Some have more power and torque, some have a little bit better fuel efficiency, some is has a little bit better acceleration, and some are smoother. But for all intents and purposes, I will group the rest of it in a very similar category. Once again, the Pathfinder is a little bit smoother than, let's say, a Mazda CX-9, uh, which is also showing its age a little bit. Uh, but in terms of comparing the Kia Telluride, Honda Palisade, and the Toyota uh, Highlander, very similar. Uh, the Toyota Highlander engine also showing its age a little bit. So if I have to put everything in the spectrum, uh, once again, the 4Runner is probably the worst in terms of engine performance and engine feel, uh, followed by Toyota Highlander. But Toyota Highlander and Mazda CX-9, very, very similar in feel. And then Kia Telluride and Hyundai Palisade, little bit smoother than the Nissan Pathfinder. Not my much. They're both very close together. So I would say the Nissan Pathfinder uh, and the Hyundai Palisade slash Kia Telluride are more or less the same kind of engine feel. Uh, once again, some of them performs better in terms of zero to 60 or the fuel economy, but in terms of just the driving feel on the road, really hard to tell them apart uh, unless you drive them back to back, you know, every day for a couple of days there will be some differences. So I would say the Pathfinder is slightly above average. So kind of a mid-pack level, I would give it kind of a B minus for a Pathfinder. None of these SUVs that I just mentioned have an outstanding engine because they're all using older but proven uh, V6 engines that are you know decent and they're reliable. They're quite comfortable and easy to drive but not spectacular in terms of performance or the feel. So those are some of the comments I have about the engine overall. Finally, transmission, braking, uh, unless I take all this SUV on a track and do a direct comparison, it's a little hard to say, uh, but um, the brake feel on the Pathfinder is excellent. It modulates well, it has a good feedback, a little bit light to my taste, but has a good brake. I think um, actually based on my feel, the Toyota Highlander and Mazda CX-9 have the best brake feel. And then Kia Telluride, Honda Palisade, uh, and then this one, Pathfinder, all feel about the same. Uh, also, 4Runner has a pretty solid brakes as well. Uh, so not too far behind these guys, but because the truck is heavy and cumbersome, and because it's body on the frame, it always feels a little bit awkward when you step on the brake because there's lots of diving that happens with the suspension on the 4Runner. In terms of transmission, thankfully, the Pathfinder is no longer using CVT. And so uh, this feels pretty good. It shifts really fast, it's quick. Um, maybe not quite as smooth as the Kia Telluride and Hyundai Palisade, uh, but very, very close and it shifts uh, quickly. So I think the transmission is also very good on the, um, on this Nissan Pathfinder. I have no complaints on it. Well, well calibrated and very well tuned to the engine. Uh, so let me finish off by making overall comment about the driving feel of the Pathfinder. And basically what I can say is that the Pathfinder feels like luxury vehicle. It feels like a Lexus. It feels like a more expensive Infiniti. In fact, I think overall noise vibrations and harshness, the ride feel and the general comfort might be better than some of the Lexus or Infiniti cars. It's better than Lexus RX, for example. My number one pet peeve really is the steering feel is too numb, too light. Nissan, please calibrate this. I know you can make that happen next year. Make it a little bit heavier, give us a little bit more heft and weight. 
and uh, give us a little bit more road feel. And then the Pathfinder will be near perfect and we'll go right up there with some of the best SUVs, uh, which are really the CX-9 as a contender. So those are some of the final concluding remarks about the Pathfinder. I'm not going to talk about the options and features and how much room you have in the fuel economy. Those are stuff you can get it from other channels, other medias. I just really want to tell you exactly how the Pathfinder feels on the road and how it compares with other competitors. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Please give me the thumbs up if you can. And uh, please uh, subscribe and continue to watch my videos because I'm here for you and I'm here to share my ideas and my thoughts so that you can learn from my channel. Thank you so much again. I'm signing off for now.